once again to the AJP Heart and Circulatory Physiology video table of contents or from the editor's desk for March 2018. This month we've published 28 articles, including two reviews. Clearly there's something here for everyone. I wish I had some time to highlight all of the papers, but can only touch on some of the great science this month. So here we go. First review Andrade et al. discuss the role of exercise training as a non-pharmacological therapy capable of restoring normal autonomic function and improving survival in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection factor fraction. Improvements in autonomic function after exercise training are correlated with restoration of normal peripheral chemoreflex sensitivity and baroreflex sensitivity in HEF-REF. The present review focuses on recent studies that address primary pathophysiological mechanisms of heart failure, HEF-REF and HEF-PEF, and the potential avenues by which exercise training exerts its beneficial effects. Next, Verkaik et al. discuss the use of myocardial contrast echocardiography, or MCE, to study myocardial perfusion defects in mice in detail. The value of MCE compared with single photon emission computed tomography, positron emission tomography, and computed tomography consists of high spatial resolution, the possibility of quantification of blood volume, and relatively low cost. They describe technical aspects of MCE and the physiological parameters that influence myocardial perfusion data obtained with this technique. When these technical and physiological aspects of MCE are taken into account and adequately standardized, MCE is an easy, accessible technique for mice that can be used to study the control of myocardial perfusion by a wide range of factors. Freddy et al. studied the extent to which varying types of cardiac pacemaker cells differ electrophysiologically. They examined major ionic currents in individual intercable pacemaker cells, or IPCs, sampled from the paracrystal intercable region, including the sinoatrial node, that were spontaneously beating after enzymatic isolation from rabbit hearts. They measured several ionic currents in the same cells. The ionic current densities varied to a greater extent than previously appreciated, while some IPCs demonstrated very small or zero IF. The density of none of the currents was correlated with cell size, while calcium current L and IF densities were related to baseline beating rates. Parrish and co-workers determined if transient denervation of peri-infarct myocardium alters arrhythmia susceptibility compared to sustained denervation, which has been linked to arrhythmia risk. They targeted the P75 neurotropin receptor co-receptor sortolin and the P75 neurotropin receptor induced protease tumor necrosis factor alpha converting enzyme A disintegrin and metalloproteinase domain 17 or TACE and ADAM17 to selectively block peri-infarct innervation. Genetic deletion of sortolin had no effect on the timing or extent of axon degeneration but inhibition of TACE ADAM17 with the protease inhibitor marimatstat prevented the loss of axons from viable my myocardium. They determined if retention of nerves in peri-infarct myocardium had an impact on cardiac electrophysiology three days after MI using ex vivo optical mapping of transmembrane potential and intracellular calcium. Preventing acute denervation of viable myocardium after MI did not significantly alter cardiac electrophysiology or calcium handling, suggesting that transient denervation at this early time point has minimal impact on arrhythmia risk. Et al. examined advanced oxidation protein products, or AOPPs, as independent risk factors and an important mechanism in cardiac remodeling and apoptosis in chronic kidney disease. H9C2 rat cardiomyoblast cells were exposed to AOPPs. Apoptotic cells were determined by tunnel assay. Serum AOPPs were measured in male spregdoli rats that underwent, underwent sham surgery and 5-6 nephrectomy 
respectively. AOPPs activated junk signaling and endoplasmic reticulum stress and significantly aggravated H9C2 rat cardiomyoblast cell apoptosis. In vivo, serum levels of AOPPs were progressively elevated with the increasing time course in uh, chronic kidney disease rats compared with sham operated rats. Serum AOPP levels were positively associated with cardiomyocyte apoptosis. Finally, Lippard et al. determined if endothelial dysfunction is a superinducer of syndican 4, a member of the membrane spanning glycocalyx forming proteoglycan family. They compared wild type and fibrosis prone endothelial sirtuin 1 deficient mice the latter being a model of global endothelial dysfunction. Elevated syndican 4 was due to enhanced NF-kappa-B signaling in CERT-1 knockout mice. The authors propose that it is the syndican 4 ectodomain per se that is partially responsible for fibrosis in unilateral ureteral obstruction, especially when it's combined with endothelial dysfunction. Watching this month, I know it takes a little extra time to click on this video link, and, and we really appreciate it. Go to our website and browse the other great papers in this month's issue. We will see you next month, and don't forget to send us your best work now. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day.